Hello again guys, it is Faker with another Legends of Runeter video. Today I have one final showcase of Monotargon for you guys. I wanted to show furthermore some more meta decks that we were able to beat. In the end we were 13 and 3 with the list. Uh, we had gained 250 LP. So you know what? I'm very impressed with the deck. I think it's very underrated and I would recommend it. We have a new patch coming out tomorrow. So I wanted to showcase these last final games and show that, you know, with the right insight, the right mindset, you can build a deck and win some games. Whether or not it's a popular deck or not, you've got this. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and jump in the comments and say hello. I appreciate all the feedback and support you guys have been giving. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you with some new decks and a new patch. Mm, no, I can't be the right play, can I? I think I just have to play this now. I don't think we can be passing using our mana to summon units. Not against Swain. Okay, maybe I'll play this shield bearer now. This is a very interesting matchup. Yeah, we have to play this. My faith protects me. <laughs> hey Faint, how are you? How are you, man? Thanks for dropping the winks. Hope you've been well, stranger. I'm feeling pretty like good double swing here. He'll take the trade. That's fine. And I've got the chat box perfectly set up so it won't interfere with the interface that much. What don't we, what don't we want to see here? We want to pass our mana, I think. Yeah, we can end the round here. That's fine. No, it's actually actually a really good pass for us. Oh, Nolo is playing MTG. Sad. He used to be an MG, MTG player. Look at this hand, guys. I almost feel like I have to pale cascade, right? Oh. Alternatively, I can just play Diana. Yeah, maybe this is just fine. We don't have Challenger though. We do not have Challenger, I repeat. Interesting. Oh, hey Cosmic, what's up man? How was the mass you pew? How was your climb? We masters? Have a good stream, brother. I'm dipping to get some sleep. Good night, dude. Thanks for the raid. I appreciate that. Do I have a star shaping the diner? <laughs> Wait, I don't think I need a star shaping now. Wait, do I play the diner copy or the? I think I play the non-diner copy. I think we might need the diner for challenger. Oh, I wonder if I should have maybe saved my unit here. I haven't got any fearsome blockers for the Swain coming down next turn. He's either, he's either playing around Guiding Touch or he's playing around uh, Bastion there. Or well, not Bastion, he can't really play around that. Keep up, keep up. Alright, Mountain Square it is. Big Raid Hype. Big Raid Hype. No, not much value, not much value. I think it has to be the warrior, right? Are the choppers being swiped? What? <laughs> choppers? Swiped? He may have drew, um... Oh. I guess now's a decent time to play Pale Cascade, right? He's really invested in clearing my units. Get to the chopper. What are we thinking this turn, guys? He's got six mana. 
He looks, he wants to be looking to play, you know, certain cards. Maybe we're just leaning towards the warrior. We can challenge the, um, we can challenge the Zap Sprayfin. That's a stun. No problem. Is it ever correct to swing with the Mountain Scryer? Perhaps not. He's a man with many answers. I think I need to start playing these star shapings and the Lunari Priestesses. I need to have answers to Leviathan and Swain and stuff. Choosing not to swing with the... Why would you not swing, swing with the sentry there? There must be a reason for it. If you behold a celestial, obliterate enemies with three or less. I don't think that's the card for us. The immortal fire might actually help us to close out the game. Maybe that's the call. Fallen Comet, fantastic. The more Fallen Comets, the better. And if given the opportunity, I will play the Lenari, Lenari Duskbringer. Uh, red card, that's a bit, that's a bit harsh. A little bit harsh. Into Make It Rain. He's just kind of nutting out with all the answers, isn't he, guys? I wonder if it's correct actually not to clear this, the tier. Twist of Fate here. Hey, feels creative. The removal is relentless. I know. He just can't stop. Alright, so we've got the plays here. We've got the plays here. Falling Comet looks fantastic. We chose not to clear the Twist of Fate. Hopefully that doesn't bite us in the ass. One Leviathan down. The card draw might be relevant. Is the Swain flipped? The Swain is flipped. I need to make sure I have a blocker up for that, right? This might be a mistake if he has another arachnoid sentry, but I can't afford to play around it. Bull shark. Naturally being running in, running the deck. We have to keep passing here. Might be sitting on double twist of fate. Let's take the moon silver so we can start to reduce the cost of some of our cards. I could even go ahead and play the messenger this turn. This is a very close game. I think living, living Legends might be a little bit too slow for us, but I like the position we're in. 
That's no problem. Okay, this is a very important turn. This is a very important turn. Oh, wow. I'm a little bit threatened by the current state of the twist of fate. That's very much uh, the case here. I'm going to open up with the messenger. This is to buff the immortal fire a little bit more. At this point, I think I'm going to try and take this trade. I'll see how he responds here. He's basically looking for one more card draw. Can he get it? No. But hopefully I can star shaping here. And that should deny some place. Because he can't, he can't, he can now no longer ravenous flock on the stack. This is very relevant. I guess the twist of fate was getting a little bit threatening there. So we're happy to pass here, right? It's a very close game. So obviously the Leviathan can come down this turn. Maybe we'll open up with the Ravoon. I think getting Ravoon onto the field might be useful. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Okay, let's protect our board here. Oh wait, it doesn't work. That was a misplay. That's okay. I didn't need to Pale Cascade here. He has the, um... This thing. Let's play Leona here. Hey Milky Way, hey Gone Man. So I guess playing Ravoon was kind of, you know, a safe play for us. I don't think I want to sunburst just yet, if that makes sense. I'll keep the Swain on the field for as long as necessary. So that like, he doesn't really get to play another one. This deck looks cool, I like the video, thanks for that man. I do like this deck. And I've actually been a little bit curious about this matchup. However, I think I've played all my star shapings, so I'm down to 10 HP. And there's not going to be a lot I can change about that. So I'm probably going to have to look for a way to end this game very shortly. I am most definitely going to have to look for a way to end this game. Going for a salvage here. I'm not, I'm not really sure why you do salvage on the stack. He might be looking for Ravenous Flock. Yeah, thanks Arcanus. I did see your comment very last minute before I turned on the stream. He might be convinced that he can't attack you. Alright. What are we thinking, guys? Maybe we'll look for the win? Stun board? Yeah, I'm with it. I mean, if we look at how many cards he's played, he's played double twist of fate for a red card. Yeah, he, he probably has some spells here, without a doubt. He's gonna stun my Ravoon, that's fine. Just forfeit? 
I don't think we're at a forfeit position just yet. I think we're still somewhat in this game. That does make things a little bit awkward. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Actually, I might have lethal. We might have lethal, guys. I can always go for the immortal fire lethal. I need to get, I need to get three playable celestial cards. How does this work? Do I ever play some other cards first? No, I think we just play what's in hand right now. Here we go. What's up, Delacroix? Thanks for the hydrate. I haven't got my water right now. Play the soldier first. <sighs> but the mana might be really relevant. Also, but finding the cards might be really relevant too. Yeah, we'll play the soldier. All right, here we go. We need two more playable cards. Feels bad. Oh wait, no, the trickster. The trickster. Yes, elusive. And the moon silver on this coming so clutch. Oh. Today is a good day. <laughs> he actually had a really good hand too. He had a really good hand. I think we played that relatively okay. Alternatively, if I didn't find an elusive unit to play there, I did find the obliterate card. So that was pretty good as well. All right, this should be a bad matchup. We'll see how we go. We will see how we go though. I wonder if Hush is ever worth keeping since we only have one copy of it. I'll give it a go. This should by all means be a terrible matchup, especially with our opponent going first. But we top deck like a god. Alright, I guess we're pretty crazy. Shield Bearer versus Shade Stalker. It's always Shade Stalker. We'll take this attack. I want to make a Targon Karma deck. That's a throwback. That is a throwback. Draven comes down, Shield Bearer pretty much shuts down Draven from attacking. That's why I didn't consider playing it last turn. The way he's not, it's like, this attack is very much textbook reads. I don't have vision. And he might even have, um, he may or may not have crowd favor in hand too. All right. What's to play here? Do I go for the Shade Stalker as well? I don't think that's necessary. And how hard do I want to play into Willing Death? Oh, Willing Death? Fuck Willing Death. I'm not playing around Willing Death. That's nonsense. That looks like Willing Death, doesn't it? Eh, get excited. I don't think that's as bad as Willing Death. And you can always swing here because they're trying to set up crowd favorite. So this is uh, fine for us. I would have much rather preferred. If we had not have lost our unit. But you know, you cannot win them all sometimes. 
Falling Comet or Golden Sisters. I think it just has to be Falling Comet here. And luckily we kept the Hush in the opening hand, right? Um, is there any outplay for doing this? No. Force him to use an axe here. Don't block the four. Forcing him to use an axe is fine. I don't think there's an outplay for this. This should just be fine. Why is he not swinging with the saboteurs? Why do you play the saboteurs? That is the question. So what I can do here is I can um I can pressure him. I can pressure him a lot. Even if he has Jinx in hand. Well never mind, that kind of it does change things a little bit. I think my play still feels very obvious. And that is actually just a swing with everything. He can take one value block with the crowd favorite. I can deal with that. I can definitely deal with that. You must get by these first. Force him to block. Because the discard aggro deck doesn't want to block. Force him to block. Look at him. He's keeping back these saboteurs. Going down to... um. He's actually just going down to three here. I don't really have a way of killing him though. <laughs> and he has a way of killing us. They don't want to block because they want to play more crowd favorites. That is why. Okay, choosing not to go for the attack here. I feel as if the falling comet here is fantastic, right? This should be a fine play. I think this is just a play. Yeah, NZ slash. Thanks for the follow, man. Hope you're having a good day. He's already played two crowd favorites, right? It's his last card and an ability to go wide here. So we're pretty much blocking everything, yes? Everything that hurts for a lot of damage. I wonder if there's ever a call to keep the Lunari Shade Stalker alive. We might be able to kill him. Alternatively, I can just start to take control of the board completely. This buys me more time, but I don't have a chance of pushing lethal. Star Shaping might find me lethal over the next few turns. I might have enough time. I might have enough time. His last card is Jinx. If his last card is Jinx... It does make things interesting. It's hard to say. I wonder what you guys would do in this situation. Go down to seven. Fear not death. Yeah, let's just let's just trade off. We'll see what happens. His last card might not even be Jinx. We'll see. I won't be surprised though. Okay, it isn't. This is good. Lots of good cards to play here too. Um, Equinox. Not that good here. This is good. I can play the Warrior. Okay, that's a little bit awkward. That is indeed a little bit awkward. That's so awkward. Well, I think I see the line now. The light of my star warms the heavens. Uh, 
Is it a... Well, he's obviously hasn't got... He hasn't got augmented here, obviously. Am I surviving this? I am. Oh. I find myself in another interesting position. Why are you surrendering? Oops, sorry about that. I think, right? Because I was on like 8 HP or something and he was pushing like 13. So I would have been like 14. I would have been on minus one. This is a winnable matchup. Yeah, I get that, but am I am I incorrect? When I when you look at the Oracle's eye and it's calculating the entire attack, even though like these attacks go through first, it still calculates when the life still goes through, I think. Right? The eye wasn't calculating life still because you did it before it. Has a deck going against um, ramp. I versed one ramp deck and we lost. We did lose that matchup. I didn't find my obliterate cards though. I've actually only versed one deck though. I would argue this deck might have a pretty good shot at beating it. The thing is that this deck has an answer to everything. Okay, so the eye doesn't calculate if before, like it doesn't calculate. Okay, so if I'm dead, it won't. Okay. Well, in that case, we're on five then, so star shaping makes even more sense. Why are you swinging with this? I don't know if that's correct, but I know I'm versing a very good player, so... You know, I won't hold it against him. I don't think I want to let him float mana here. I'm allowing him to develop Diana. Wait, he would just play Fiora, right? I think he just play Fiora there. Wait, does he have a combat trick I'm not aware of? He's naturally running Prismatic Barrier. Honestly, I wasn't expecting that. I don't think Shen Fiora decks naturally run Barrier, but he got the edge on me there. But I'm glad to see him use it now. He plays Shen, I can play uh, Leona, which is really good. Yeah, am I tripping or does Fiora Shen now all of a sudden consider taking Prismatic Barrier? That one definitely threw me off guard. Alright, so this is pretty much like a who has the biggest meat. My meat looks pretty big at the moment. We're essentially slapping meat at each other. <laughs> Make him force him to float five mana. I think that's fine. I sense an imbalance. Let's go down to seven. I'll force him to float more mana here. Okay, so basically from what I understand, the Oracle's eye won't calculate the life still if you're dead. What 
What do I do? Do I just um do I hush this now? Is that ever correct? It might be. He's gonna go for a buff here. I can go to 7 HP. So if he had repost there, he probably would have used it, right? Alright, let's um let's go for it. Let's try and kill him. Be right back, no worries. Well now I understand how the magical eye works. After all this time. Goes for a single combat here. I'm convinced star shaping looks pretty solid. Take the cosmic we can't take Cosmic here actually. We have no way of activating it. Do I ever go for the Risky Pale Cascade? I don't think so. My father's blade. Getting some life steal. Just some life steal, okay. Okay. That's fine. I don't think he has an answer to this. What's more important to protect here? This is fine. Are you winning, son? I think so. Thanks, Dad. And he develops a unit that he has to block something with. Goes to minus four, so he blocks the five. We should have a pretty good read for his hand at the moment. This deck might need one more hush, not gonna lie. It might need one more hush. Got some pretty safe blocks here. I do think we need to block though. I'm pretty convinced we have to block here. Another Spirit Sphere Future is going to be pretty good. Yeah, I can see that. That's pretty viable. They are under my protection. Alright. Let's just play a, a Mortal Fire. That's a nut straw. That is a nut straw. He has to have deny. Right, pretty easy to deny there. Fate has delivered me to you once again. Our destinies are entwined. Yeah, what's up, Vern? How's your day gone? How's your tan? <laughs> How's this look? Looks like he might be dead. I don't think attacking order really matters here. Who do we protect? Diana? Leona? This card's scary. What if he can go elusive with it? Oh, what do I do here? Just protect the Diana. You know what's good for you. Oh, dude. Wait, I could have protected both. Oh, shit. Diana flips. No. No. 
Oh, that would have been a fantastic player's turn. So, because Diana was flipping, which I completely forgot about, we could have buffed the Leona, putting Diana up to 3 attack. Maybe I'm just playing around another card. Let's just say that. Uh, no way that was correct though. Ah, uh, Sunburst is just really nuts here. Yeah, let's just, let's just go for it. This game would have been so over if that went off. Another Shen. Well, he's gonna lose his, um... Oh no, he's not. I guess I can, um, I'm pretty happy just to trade off the Shen here. How do I keep fucking this up? Oh no, I, no, I had it right, I had it right, we're right. There should be no outs now. There should be nothing he can do except for judgment, but if we're only swinging with elusive units, we should be fine. Actually, sharp sight can keep him alive. We should be most safe if we do this. Yeah, this is the most safe play because sharp side actually will keep him alive unless I swing with the 3-2. But I think opening Sunburst is probably just going to beat all those cards put together as well as having Diana. This deck's nuts, man. I've literally versed like almost every meta deck and I feel like with a bit more practice, this deck can very much beat Trundle Ramp because if you can just like because they're kind of slow which allows you plenty of time to play these really greedy cards against them you find the sunburst on curve hopefully you can clear the trundle on curve then they play trindamir you've got sunburst and obliterate cards which are fantastic against that you can probably just run them out of resources what might happen though is that they can play ruination and vengeance the, the the game the game can definitely go super late. You just wanna you just wanna like it's who draws better really. 